Okay. I guess I will start off. So what is the HTML head? So let's, rev let's revisit the sample of HTML document we covered in the previous article. So the HTML head is the content of the head element. So that's this part here. And unlike the content of the body elements, which are displayed on the page when loaded in the browser, the head's content is not displayed on the page. Instead, the head's job is to contain metadata about the document. In the above example, the head is quite small. So metadata is, in its very simplest definition, data that describes data. For example, an HTML document is data, but HTML can also contain metadata that describes the document. For example, who wrote it and its summary. Okay, so that's what the old head has. And then in the larger pages, however, the head can get quite full. Try going to some of your favorite websites and use developer tools to check out their head's content. Our aim here is not to show you how to use everything you can possibly that can possibly be put in the head, but rather teach you how to use the major elements that you'll want to include in the head and give yourself some familiarity. So let's get started. All right, uh, adding a title. We've already seen the title element in action. This can be used to add a title to the document. This, however, can get confusing with the H1 element, which is used to add a top level heading to your body content. This is also sometimes referred to as a page title, but they are different things. The H1 element appears on the page when loaded in the browser. Uh, generally, this is, should only be used once per page to mark up the title of your page content, story title, news headline, or whatever is appropriate to your usage. The title element is metadata that uh, represents the title of the overall HTML document not the document's content. Uh, active learning, inspecting a simple example. To start off this active lear learning, we'd like to, you to go to our GitHub repo and download a copy of our title example HTML page. Okay, I guess we'll do that. Okay. Well, we could just look at the code here. Yeah. Uh, uh, copy the copy and paste the code out of the page and into a new text file in your code editor. Then save it in a sensible place. Okay. Press the raw button on the page, which causes the raw code to appear in a new browser tab. Next, from your browser's menu, choose File, Save As. In your browser's menu, then choose a place to save the file. Now open the file in your browser and you should see something like this. It, it should now be completely obvious where the H1 content appears and where the co title content appears. Uh, you should also try opening the code up in your code editor, editing these contents of the elements, then refreshing the page in your browser. Have some fun with it. Okay. okay. okay so open up the file. I'm getting file. Okay. Yeah, so the H1 element is showing up on the the page and then the title element is show oh, shit. The title element is showing up in the little tab thing. They're using like some weird co codes for the uh brackets. <laughs> you see that? Like the and symbol LT semicolon. Title. Oh yeah, uh, they they explained that in the very first one. So oh. <laughs> for so the and uh -huh. And then the LT stands for less than, so that gives you the the uh, less than in front of the H one. 
Okay. It's just so you can put in like. Yeah, you, so like, they don't turn into one. tags. Yeah, without turning into a tag. Yeah. Okay. So there's and LT, there's and GT, there's and ampersand, and then there's and like quotation marks and stuff like that. So if I mess around with the title, so I will get page, let's type page title in here. And then in the body in the H1, we'll type in this is the, oh wait, that's not page title. This is in the tab. This is in the page and if we save that and refresh so this is in the tab this is in the page okay gotcha. really straightforward yeah uh, uh the title element contents are also used in other ways for example if you try to bookmark the page um you will see the title contents filled in as suggested bookmark name. Title contents are also used in search results, as you'll see below. Oh, so if you bookmark it. It's basically like the page page name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So how do I... I haven't used the... Uh... I don't know if you can bookmark. Uh, maybe you can. I'll try. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, it just adds the, the title element stuff to the name. I have no idea how to bookmark on Internet Explorer. All right, whatever. So basically, yeah, it just gives you the title in the, in the tab. So content are also used in search results. Okay. Okay, so metadata, the meta element. So metadata is the data that describes the data and HTML and has an official way of adding metadata to its document. So using the meta element. Of course, the other stuff we're talking about in this article could also be thought of as metadata too. There are a lot of different types of metadata elements that can be included into your page's head but we won't try to explain them all at this stage as it could get too confusing. Instead, we'll explain a few things that you might commonly see just to give you an idea. So specifying your documents, character encoding. So in the example above, this line was included, meta char set equal UTF-8. Um, this is this, something Unicode, I think. Uh, this element simply specifies the how do I move this over? This element simply specifies the document's character encoding. The character set that the document is permitted to use. So UTF-8 is a universal character set that includes pretty much any character from any human language. This means that your web page will be able to handle displaying any language and is therefore a good idea to set this on every web page you create. For example, you can handle English and Japanese. True. Okay. True. Uh, if you set your character encoding to ISO 8859, for example, the character set for Latin, your page rendering might get all messed up. Interesting. So if we put this in. Yeah, sorry. Got to make sure we have that UTF 8 character set. Mm. But that, that is included into the default. Um, set up this is the is it actually yeah so if you delete everything you do html and then click on five oh it's already so it already gives you the I see a bunch of meta tags actually there's a width device width initial scale i, I i'm guessing that scales the page if you if you're on the phone or something mm. oh true. Um, http Quit. I don't know what that is. Content, i.e. edge. Compatible. Something with compatibility. I don't know. 
Um, also, in the HTML tag, there's language en. I guess it specifies its English language. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so let's get it back to UTF-8. Okay, so basically just always have UTF-8. That seems like the go-to. Uh, so active learning experiment with character encoding. Try this out. So revisit the sample HTML template we originally had. Um, in your previous section, try changing the Medica car set to ISO and add the Japanese to your page. Okay, so you just replace the ETF. Then we'll add a paragraph tag um, into the body element. Um, Save. And it's going to be in Japanese. Well, apparently it's not supposed to work. Okay, yeah, the Japanese doesn't work, but the English works fine. Oh, yours works. My, or yours doesn't work. Mine does work. I think it just auto-translates it. Did you put oh, yeah. in... Some browsers, example, Chrome, automatically fix incorrect encodings. Wow. So depending on what browser you use, you may not see this problem anyway. See, okay. this is why nobody uses Internet Explorer. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, so adding author and description. So many meta elements include the name and content attributes. Um, names is a specifies the type of meta element it is, what type of information it contains. Content specifies the actual metadata. So two such metadata elements are useful to include to your page, define the author of the page, and provide concise description of the page. So for this one, it's meta, name, author, content, Chris Mills. Okay, so that's the author's name is Chris Mills. And then description, and the content of the description is the description of the page. So learning aims to provide complete beginners with to the web all they need to know to get started in developing websites. Cool. It is useful to it's be able to work out who wrote the page if you want to contact them with questions. Some content management systems have faculties to automatically extract paid author information and make it available for such purposes. Specifying descriptions that include keywords relating to the content of your page is useful as it has the potential to make your page appear higher in relevant searches performed in search engines. Okay, so I guess um, search engine optimization. Okay, so I guess uh, it, for like search engines, they don't just look at like the body and the text in your page. They look at like- Oh, the they look at all the code, I guess. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Okay. Active learning, the description use, the descriptions used in search engines. So the description is also used on search engine results page. Let's go through an exercise to explore this. So go to the front page of the Mozilla Developer Network, which is this one. Cool. Uh, view the page sources by, so view the page source. Oh. Find the description meta tag. It will look something like this. Um, meta, meta name, meta. Okay. It's uh, pretty much all the way at the bottom, like right before the body. I am not fine. Okay, let's go for this. Okay, found it. So meta name description. Okay, what are we doing with this? 
they have not said. <laughs> um, now search for MDN web docs in your favorite search engine. And you'll notice the description meta title element oh. used in the search results. Okay. That'll, that's the text that it appears. Mm. Oh, good. It's pretty useful. What provides information about optimal technologies? Provides information about optimal technologies. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. The, like the amount of times I've clicked on something because like I read relevant information in like the, yeah. the Google thing and then I can't find it on the web page. That's because it's in the header. Okay. Good to know. So many meta features aren't used anymore. For example, uh, meta elements such as keywords, content fill in your keyboard here, which is supposed to provide keywords for your search engine to determine relevance of the page is ignored by search engine because spammers were just filling the keyword list with hundreds of keywords. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, as you travel around the web, you'll find other types of metadata too. A lot of features you'll see on websites are proprietary creation designed to provide certain sites with specific pieces of information they can use. For example, open graph data is a metadata protocol that Facebook invented to provide rather to provide richer metadata for websites. Open graph data. What is this? I guess it's like meta meta tag stuff properties. A specifically Facebook users, okay. In the MDN web doc source code, property OG image. Or did I just see this? Oh, OG image. Okay. One effect of this is that when you link to MDN web docs on Facebook, the link appears long with an image and a description, which is a richer experience for users. Okay, true. Twitter also has its own similar proprietary metadata, which has a similar effect when the site's URL is displayed on Twitter. Twitter also has its own similar proprietary metadata, which has a similar effect when the site's URL is, for example, Mm. Okay. All right. Um, adding custom icons to your site. Further enrich your site design, you can add references to custom icons in your metadata. And, the, and these will be displayed in certain contexts. The most commonly used of these is the fav icon, short for favorites icon, referring to its use in the favorites or bookmarks lists in browsers. The humble fave icon has been around for many years. It is the first icon of this type, a 16 pixel square icon used in multiple places. You may see, depending on the browser, fave icons displayed in the browser tab containing each open page and next to bookmark pages in the bookmarks panel. A fave icon can be added to your page by Saving it to in the same directory as the site's index page, saved in .ico format. Most browsers will support fav icons in more common formats like .gif or .png, but using the ico format will ensure it works as far back as Internet Explorer six. Oh, okay. Hmm. Adding the following line into your HTML's head block to references. Short icon. Okay. Favicon.co image. 
Hmm. Are we putting this into the head? Yeah, I guess. We'll see what happens. Short icon on href fave icon. Problem is... I don't have a fave icon. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have one either. <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh, hello, someone else is here. There's someone else in the chat? Yeah, I just noticed. Oh, true, there's three people. Arjun. Okay. How do I? Okay, I guess you're just watching. Um. Oh, what's this? Oh, there's something in the chat. Oh, he's having trouble with his mic. Okay, true. That's all right. Um. Okay. All right. No worries. Okay, I guess this is just an example of like. Yeah, what shows an could happen yeah so bookmark example so basically so when you bookmark it this is what shows up mm -hmm. do you think it would also show up up here too it'll be the same icon yeah the same one it'll show up in both places yeah. maybe. okay Problem is, I'm not sure where you put the icon itself. Oh, well, maybe. Okay, hey, maybe if we uh, copy one of these, because this has a href link that's like a. Oh no, it's also a PNG. Mm. Oh, that's a website though. Yeah. Okay. Let's try yeah, this. Should work. And then Let's try. We'll do this. Link. Save this and then refresh. See, the thing is, I don't know how to bookmark. It did not work. It didn't work for you? Uh, let's try again. Yeah, it doesn't show up in the tab. I'll try bookmarking. It doesn't show up in the bookmarks either. I'll delete that. Um, I'll try a different one. Basic fave icon. I'll use that. Oh, because it's not found. None of this is found. No? Like if you Google the website. Oh. It just says not found. Okay, let's try. Uh, I have an idea. I'll just Google like a fave icon and yeah. then link Google, it to that. Uh, if I can, yeah. oh, these are like all really big folder. Okay, I'll just use Google's copy the location and put it into the into the href. I don't know if, it, if, if it's gonna work. Oh, it does. Okay. Use the Google one? Yeah. I just right clicked and copied the link address and then put it put it inside the href. Um, I wonder how it knows it's the icon. Oh maybe REL? I'll look up what REL is. No, mine's not. REL attributes specifies the relationship between the current document and the linked document. 
Okay. I'm trying to open this call. Yeah, I'll put this in chat. This is what the REL thing does. Okay. Mm. Did it work for you? No, it's still not showing up for me. Um, Can I see your code? One sec. So, copy, save, copy image address. And yeah, href. Oh, here. Here, use this address. Oh, you got the same one now. It looks like. Does it end in .png? Yeah, .png. Okay, so same. That should work then. Yeah. And then let's go to where was this? New folder. Try going live with the, because it might be Internet Explorer. What the hell? Oh. Were you on your... Getting started. No, on this page. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, let's save this and then let's close this and instead open it with Chrome. Where does your show up? Like here? Yeah, it shows there and when I make a bookmark. Hmm. I have an images folder and a styles folder. You don't, I think. Might I don't think it makes a difference though. So. No, it should make a difference because we're not referencing the, the image. Um, type image X icon. Okay. So this is just plain. And then no. Where was that Google page? So copy image address and then this into here. Save. Let's try one more time. That's weird. I don't know why it's not working for you. Hmm. Inspect. Here, try copying my tag. Source. Um. Oh, you know why, maybe? Oh, the REL is wrong. Yeah, it didn't get saved to it. What we're going to do, close this, and then open with Visual Studio Code. Yeah, this is still... I don't know what you were editing earlier. <laughs> Save. No, I think it's got saved to it now. It's got an icon now, but it's not the right one. Nope. Right. Mm. 
you have the wrong REL. It the REL needs to be shortcut icon, so it knows it's an icon. So how it's supposed to look, type equal image, this. I don't even have that type part. Not sure what that does. There we go. No, no that works. <laughs> Holy, that took way longer than it should have. Yeah. All right, but we got it to work, no worries. That's what matters. At the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of the job. So basically, uh, the type image x icon. Okay, so it's the REL. Then that's what matters. Short icon. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. Also, these ones were for uh, true. Okay. These ones are for iPads and stuff like that. Oh. You know the ones I had? I thought that if I copied this, this one might work. But uh, it was for Apple Touch icon. Also, the links didn't work. And the links didn't work on top of that, yeah. Yeah. And the REL attribute specifies the relationship between the current document and the link document. So it just mm -hmm. tells you it tells the uh, uh, compiler that this is a link for the icon. True, okay. And then type is... I'm not sure what type is. Okay. All right, sounds good. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Yeah. Where do you left, leave off? Um, I think here. The, the comments explain what each icon is used for. These elements cover things like providing a nice high resolution icon to use when the website is saved to an iPad's home screen. Ah. Don't worry too much about implementing all these types of icons right now. This is a fairly advanced feature, and you will be expected to have knowledge of this to progress through the course. Okay. Uh, the main purpose here is to let you know what such things are in case you come across them while browsing other websites. Mm -hmm. Source code. Um, if your site uses content security policy to enhance its security, the policy applies to the fav icon. If you encounter problems with the fav icon not loading, verify that the content security policy header's image source directive is not preventing access to it. Image RSRC, okay. All right. Uh, I guess I'll read this next session. Um, applying CSS and JavaScript to HTML. Just about all websites you'll use in the modern day will employ CSS to make them look cool and JavaScript to power them interactive functionality, such as video players, maps, games, and more. These are most commonly applied to the web page using the link element and the script element, respectively. So the link element always goes inside the head of your document. This takes two attributes, REL style sheet, which indicates that it is the document style sheet, and the href, which contains the path to the style sheet file. The script element does not have to go into the head. In fact, often it is better to put it at the bottom of the document body, just before the closing body tag, to make sure that all the HTML content has been read by the browser before it tries to apply JavaScript to it. Mm. Um, if JavaScript tries to access an element that doesn't yet exist, the browser will throw an error. So a script source myjsfile.js 
right, closing tag. Uh, the script tag element may look like an empty element, but it's not, and so it needs a closing tag. Instead of pointing it to an external script file, you can also choose to put your script inside of the script element. Okay. Active learning, applying CSS and JavaScript to a page. To start this active learning, grab a copy of our meta example.html script.js style CSS files. Save them on your local computer in the same directory. Make sure they are saved with correct names and file extensions. Okay, I guess I'll do that. Um, an HTML file, I'm just going to copy this and paste it to my current one. Mm -hmm. And the JavaScript. the JavaScript in the scripts folder. Correctly uh, open the HTML file in both your browser and your text editor by following the information given above. Add link and script elements to your HTML so that your CSS and JavaScript are applied to your HTML. Okay, I'll just copy the link and I'll put that into my head. And grab the JavaScript and put it at the end of, can it be after the body? Oh no, it's gotta be just before the body tag, the closing body tag. Edit the location. Okay, mine is green and red. Give me one second. That pops to. When you click on the red box, eat. Scripts. Save and then style. So this is the styles. Paste, save, Let's close this, started, I'm going to replace that with this. So that's what we have to do. Done correctly. So that would be 
They said right before the the ending. Right of before the closing body type, yeah. That would be scripts. Was it script or scripts? I think it's script. And then SRC equal. So that is. Sure, it's yeah. in quotation marks. Oh, yeah. Scripts dash JS. Gotta love visual code. <laughs> Auto completing everything. You close it, so you close the tag and then you end. And then, okay, I did that part for me. And then up here in the head, we do style. No, it's a link, um, the link tag. Oh yeah, okay, so link, REL, style sheet. Mm. While you do this, I'll be right back. Right. Link, REL, style sheet. Oh. Yep. And then href. Href. And this is literally just my, okay. Style dash. Dash style dot CSS. And let's see how this looks. Japanese example, below is a dynamic list. Click anywhere outside the list to create a new list item. What do you want this list item to have? Um, apples. Banana. And then Okay, cool. All right, sweet. I guess we'll wait till, uh, till you get back. Go to the chat. Arjun, I just took in, uh, in case you're not following along. This is the, uh, this is the link. Cam back. This is the oh, type message. This is the link that we're using. Oh yeah, okay, I got it to work. Okay, so when you click on the box, it Makes a new box. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The JavaScript has added an empty list to the page. Now, when you click anywhere on the list, a dialog bo box will pop up asking you to enter some text for a new list item. Uh, when you press the OK button, the new list item will be added to the list containing the text. When you click on an existing list item, a dialog box will pop up allowing you to change the item's text. The CSS has caused the background to go green and the text to become bigger. It has also styled some of the content that the JavaScript has added to the page. The red bar with the black border is styling the CSS has added to the JS generated list. Mm. Uh, okay. Next up, 
is setting the primary language of the documents. Okay, so you know when we did our uh, the HTML and then it said like language was something? Mm -hmm. So finally, it's worth mentioning that you can and really should set the language of your page. This can be done by adding the language attribute to the opening HTML tag. Uh, this is useful in many ways. Your HTML document will be indexed more effectively by search engines if its language is set, allowing it to appear correctly. Okay. Uh, it is useful to people with visual impairments using screen recorders, for example. The word six exists in both French and English, but is pronounced differently. True. Okay. You can use, you can also set subsections of your document to be recognized as different languages. For example, we would like our Japanese language section to be recognized as Japanese, like so. Oh, I see, okay. So you use the span. Language JA. So if we wanted to go back and do it, it would be, so, okay, so this is language US. Title. So this recognizes all uh, characters in English or written languages. Author, Chris Mills, description. And then if we go into the body, so it's right here is when we do it. Span, lang, is it lang or lang? Yeah, lang equal. J A True. And then you close it. And now this is known as Japanese. Okay, sweet. I wonder if that does anything to the to the website. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. I think it's like I've seen add-ons for like your browser where you can have Google Translate, and maybe that like. Oh, maybe. It just finds uh, those areas. Yeah. So, so it knows like. Hey, this is Japanese or well, whatever. Uh, summary, the, that marks the end of our quick fire tour of the HTML head. There's a lot more you can do in here, but an exhaustive tour would be boring and confusing at this stage. We just wanted to give you an idea of the most common things you'll find in there for now. In the next article, article we'll be looking at HTML text fundamentals. Okay. Well, get to the next page. All right, hold up. I'm going to... Stop recording.